Why don't you join up with my group and we can help each other out? You helped him out by giving him a hand. D just to clarify, you, you do mean... Yes. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're jumping into the r slash tales of neck beards. This was also posted to my personal subreddit r slash red x reads. So if you're looking for it, you might find it here. You might find it there. But wherever you're looking, I'm sure the story is delicious because it is a duplicate of itself. I checked it out. I did the comparisons. They look basically the exact same. So I didn't get any like special secrety parts or whatever, but that's cool. You know, <laughs> this is from user Electrical Fennec. You might see him as Raiga in the Discord. He's also done a parody song, which I'm totally going to get to at some point, but it's a parody of the anime theme song, Cells at Work, which I don't watch and I'm not really familiar with, so we're gonna have to practice that one up a little bit more, but it'll come on the channel eventually, I do promise it. And of course, right when I sit down to record, the dogs outside start going ape shit. So uh, let me get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way. Go calm those dogs down. <laughs> and then we will dive right into some serpent beard neckbeard cringe. The Saga of Serpent Beard. Part number one of PSU, Pineapple, and Pinors. <laughs> Pinors. I haven't heard that in a long time. That's good stuff. Also, not safe for work ahead. Names have been changed. Events or locations have not. So, here we are. I didn't really think that I had any neckbeard stories, but I had forgotten about certain individuals in my life. And only recently did I really begin to think about one such individual. I wish that I could say that he was a footnote in my life, but the simple truth is that without the individual in question, I would probably still be spinning my wheels without very many friends. So, in some sick way, I still have to be grateful to the man that I'm about to describe to you in this short series that we will call The Saga of Serpent Beard. Or how I wasted my early 20s with a shit friend. <laughs> but was he a neckbeard, though? I guess we'll find out. Bear in mind, this story is very much not safe for work, which we love. <laughs> there are certain things that will be described within that I wish hadn't happened, but I have to come clean about every part of this story to get to the meat of the matter. The neckbeard that I put up with. I take little pleasure in recounting this tale. But perhaps if I can put it out there and try to laugh at it, I can move along. Anyways, with that said, meet the cast. Fennec, protagonist Narratio. That's me, R.O.P. At the time of the story in question, a lonely, deeply introverted man who had maybe one real friend, and that was online, got a hold of an Xbox 360 and a copy of Fantasy Star Universe. Here we go. <laughs> and met with this first group of online friends as a result, leading to the incidents with the titular Serpent Beard. This period in time made me realize what I had almost become before meeting him. Hindsight, huh? <laughs> Thank God for that, man. Never really missed the neckbeard exit on the highway of life, as I think most of us did, and that's why we all have such, such a fascination. We've also got Serpent Beard, of course, Neckbeardicus Forktungicus, Without question, the biggest, fattest bastard I ever met in my goddamn life. <laughs> so nicknamed for his love of Nagas and his avatar. Disgusting in so many senses of the word, particularly his habits, his odor, and his attitude towards his family. Also, extremely sexually deviant. After the first sentence, I was like, you know, being fat does not a beard make, but then you got to the rest of the stuff and I'm like, oh. Okay, <laughs> now I get it. We've got Claude, Cucumberous Coolicus, a good guy with the most laid-back attitude I've ever personally seen. Whoa! <laughs> I always imagine the dude slumped over the back of the couch, even in rooms where there was no couch. BYOC. <laughs> I never met him in person, unlike Serpent Beard and his unwitting bitch, but 
I wish that I had, named for a Star Ocean character, Flaps, Bottomus Bitchicus, <laughs> Serpent Beard's self-proclaimed, um, cock sleeve. Oh, God, <laughs> just the name alone. Thanks, I hate it. A nice person, and certainly not as bad a guy as Serpent Beard was, but he made the unfortunate decision to be his boyfriend. Both of them are bi, which will come up in part two. Despite being complicit in part two's happenings, he never came across as particularly mean or hateful, just as the passenger seat rider in the car of douchedom. Yeah, but he never decided to grab the wheel, which, you know, kind of makes him complicit in a way. I will be watching him extra closely. Choose your stage. This tale took place on the border of two states, Oregon and Washington, in a little town called Dallasport. Dalesport? I think it's Dallas. It has two L's. <laughs> I don't know. Specifically, it was the small patch of land dedicated to a farm surrounded by cherry orchards that my family once owned but has since foolishly sold. Aww. My father's family are idiots <laughs> for selling our ancestral property, but... That is a story for another time. Yeah, people see those dollar signs and, and everybody loses their minds! <laughs> With the player selected, let us begin this match. Part 1 of PSU, Pineapple, and Pinors. <laughs> makes me laugh every time. Let's start at the beginning. I, Fennec, was diagnosed early as being on a certain spectrum. You already know where this is going, so we won't dwell on it too long. But because of it, I had a tendency toward low self-esteem, and I had a lot of trouble meeting new people or socializing. I could not help this fact, being about as socially awkward as a chinchilla with anxiety. Oh, but chinchillas are so cute and soft, though. <laughs> and the few times I did open up, it was usually about some game or show that I enjoyed and that no one else ever cared about. Oof, been there. I had one long distance friend who I communicated with through the now long dead AOL Instant Messenger. Oh my god! The memories! Said friend is still my pal to this day, but he's sadly not a part of his tale. Oh, he might have offered a brief reprieve, but that's okay. We brave enough to take the cringe all by ourselves. One day, this pal said that he'd gotten an Xbox 360 and was enjoying playing Dead Rising. Hell yeah! He suggested that I look into it, and with some finagling, I was able to get a hold of one, along with a copy of said zombie game, and a game from a series that I had fond memories of from the Genesis days, Fantasy Star Universe. Aw oh boy, they Fantasy Star Online, that was some groundbreaking shit back in the day. <laughs> I enjoyed the offline story a lot, but then the game told me that there was also network mode to play. Mmm, and this was my first foray into the concept of MMOs. I made the subscription purchase and jumped in, making the cast character that would go on to become my personal namesake for me to this day. For the sake of consistency and also to protect myself, we'll just call him Fennec Foxicus. So what does all this have to do with Serpent Beard? Well, this was the game where I met him and several others. I don't remember what exactly was involved, but I was in one of those free missions, grinding up my cast's level, when someone joined my party. I'd been playing frequently at this point, but usually solo if I could get away with it. Then I heard a voice. Need a little help? Big damn heroes not wave. Big damn heroes, sir. Ain't we just? This guy, playing a female beast named Tanya, was already at a much higher level than me, but he still came along to help out. A mission that typically would have taken me upwards of a half hour went by in minutes with his help. To say that I was grateful would be an understatement. Afterwards, I was ready to leave the party, but he stopped me. Hey now, no need to leave, buddy. Why don't you join up with my group and we can help each other out? Oh, you know what that's code for, don't ya? <laughs> now, at the time, I was still wary of others, even those online. Probably especially those online, right? <laughs> you should still always be pretty wary of others. But the idea of working together with other players was enticing, to say the least. 
it meant further interaction, which I didn't get a lot of at this point in my life, so I joined the group, and I became ingrained into it in a short time. In addition to this person who referred to himself as Serpent Beard, we also had three other members that I recall. Claude, who sounded like he was a skateboarding stoner on Valium most of the time. <laughs> Fishy, who came from the greatest of Britons, and was personable, if rarely around. And Moist Mist, so called for sounding like Simon Helberg with a head cold. Fishy and Mist were largely unimportant in the grand scheme of things, though. This is about Serpent Beard, and apparently Claude. I hope that Claude tries to save you from Serpent Beard at some point and just doesn't end up being a weirdo just like him. Cause why are they hanging out together honestly? I guess to level up. <laughs> Needs must and all. At first, he was normal enough. We played games together. A lot of games. He and I would talk about anime and manga, and in general, we got along fairly well. But something changed around the time that he talked me into joining the furry fandom. Oh boy, how do you talk somebody into joining that? <laughs> it might be like a latent kink that you didn't know you have or something like that. I got quite a few furry friends and none of them would ever manage to talk me into joining. <laughs> I want to make this clear. Furries are weird. There's no question about this. I mean, I'm one of them, and I still can't wrap my head around some of our lunatic subcultures. But as weird as we are, we're mostly personable and friendly. Well, that's true. That's why I got a few furry friends. I just make sure that we don't touch on more depraved subject matters. <laughs> but Servant Beard was just a magnet for all the worst aspects of being a furry. At the time, I hadn't fully embraced a fursona yet. But I started talking with more people through Serpent Beard, so it wasn't bad. And then Serpent Beard met his boyfriend, Flaps, and his freak flag flew way higher. <laughs> now, at the time, I was bi curious. I have no issue with admitting to this, in the interest of complete transparency. As of writing this, I can safely say that I'm 95.7% straight, but Serpent Beard, on the other hand, was hardcore in the waters of bisexuality, waist deep. He started getting on Xbox camera wearing skimpy clothing. Skimpy women's clothing. <laughs> oh no. Uh, uh, I mean, I guess cross dressing's a fetish too, but man, we're just trying to play a game here, okay? <laughs> not on camera with people that don't consent. That's not cool. Jesus. This 300 plus pound asshole had no business wearing clothing like this. Less a drag queen and more of a drag hobo. <laughs> and not even one that Ramtide would touch. <laughs> and then he got on camera while his boyfriend was visiting. Oh god. Ugh. I feel sick to my stomach right now. I don't know how Xbox cameras works. Is there a way to like refuse this connection or just block him as long as he decides to keep being a creep. This is so not cool. And Serpent Beard and his boyfriend were in bed together. Naked. <laughs> Team Four Star Vegeta Shudder dot move. Surely, surely this was as bad as he would ever get, right? Ah, <sighs> Fennec, you sweet fuzzy, big-eared summer child. <laughs> it's time for the meat of the story. That wasn't the meat of the story! <laughs> These were just the opening events. God, I'm terrified now. The beginning of what became increasingly stressful interactions with Serpent Beard. Yes, the camera stuff wasn't even really that big compared to the first big nail in the coffin. Oh god, brace yourself, friends. <laughs> this is this is gonna get real bad, isn't it? Holy hell. So Serpent Beard, Claude, Flaps, and myself had amassed quite a few friends from the furry community that we had joined, which shall remain unnamed. Hell, we'd even met a couple of girls who were really cool. In the excitement of making these new friends, we made a plan to join up on the East Coast, my first flight, and hit a nerd convention known as PyCon. I had only ever been to KumoriCon in the past, and the idea of going to a convention with people that I knew was exciting, so I immediately bought the ticket to go. 
We got within a short time until the trip, and then one of the girls canceled. And then one of the other guys. And then the other girl. And our planned party had dropped from 8 to 5. I was adamant about remaining booked for this because I didn't want to believe that it would dwindle any further, and also because the ticket was non-refundable. <laughs> Sometimes it's best to just let that money go, man. You might have avoided a horrible experience if you didn't go. Does anybody really want to stay in a room with freaking serpent beard? <laughs> the Xbox camera sex cam caster? <laughs> I highly doubt that. Ah. <sighs> And then I made the mistake that hung over my head for a year. Bro, if Claude and that other person doesn't make it, I will eat my own spunk on camera. <laughs> Why would you say some shit like that? Oh no. I came to regret it two days later. Claude and the remaining friends <laughs> told us that they wouldn't be able to make the trip. I just shrugged and moved on. Or at least I would have. But unbeknownst to me, Serpent Beard had written down what I'd said and taken it as an actual bet. So then, Fennec, get on camera. What? Why? Because a bet's a bet. What bet? You said that if they canceled too, that you would eat your own jizz on camera. <laughs> oh, God, I hate this story. Oh, it's delivering the cringe, though. That's what I need. <laughs> I'm sure I'll feel life returning to my system in a minute or two. Let me just process this. <laughs> God. Uh, I tried to weasel out of it. Who wouldn't? I couldn't believe this douche was taking an offhand comment as seriously as he was. But no matter how I tried to tell him no, he insisted that I had to do it. And then he dropped the ultimatum on me. Do it. Or you're out of the group. Okay, bye. <laughs> uh, oh no, Fennec, why? How could this happen to me? <laughs> I should have let the friendship end there. Yes, you should have. I should have gotten off the call and removed him from my friends list. But I didn't. Oh no. Because for some damn reason... I still valued this Beardo as a friend, and I couldn't stand the idea of losing him or the others as friends. God, this is so difficult to listen to. It reminds me of the Stealth Beard saga a little bit. Just a dude lacking in social aptitude, and that is completely taken advantage of by everybody around him. And I hate it. It keeps popping up as a theme, and that means it definitely happens, so I am sorry that this happened to you, bro. Some might argue that it's like a personal choice or whatever, but no, this is manipulation, plain and simple. I talked him into giving me a week. In the meantime, he told me to eat a lot of pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who aren't aware, apparently something about pineapple makes that semen sweeter. Yeah, I think that's just sugar, man. Fructose is good for you. <laughs> My family was very confused by the fact that our pantry suddenly had a lot more Del Monte in it. <laughs> but if they knew, they didn't say anything. For a week, I shoveled at least three servings of that stuff into my mouth every single day. My mouth was a river of fire, thanks to the enzymes. Fun science fact, pineapple actually has flesh-eating enzymes called bromine in it. And that's why it burns your mouth when you eat it and it strips your mouth raw if you eat too much. <laughs> but I carried on. The day came. Oh God, no. I got on my Xbox camera, pulled up some porn, and got on a call with Serpent Beard. This is so weird, dude. Can we go back to playing Fantasy Star? <laughs> I'm gonna stay off every MMO ever after this. Holy hell. And I jacked it, and I bricked. And I ate it. I won't lie. It was humiliating having my feet held to the fire like this, but I got over it. And I can safely say that despite all of my griping about being forced into such a demeaning activity, it was the worst experience of my sexual exploration, and I would never do anything like that ever the fuck again! Timing! 
you thought there was going to be acceptance. But actually it was because I didn't. No, no, actually it wasn't. <laughs> I hated myself at this point for making such a dumb comment. I mean, it's like saying that you're going to eat your hat. It's the person that held you to the dumb comment that is extremely crazy for letting myself be talked into this. But more than anything, for not realizing that Serpent Beard had, of course, found a way to record it. Oh, God, it just gets worse. Now then, was that so hard? He said over the call. Yes. Oh, don't worry. I won't show the footage to anyone. What footage? I, I recorded it. <laughs> Duh. Might want to crank to it later. I wasn't stupid. He didn't record it for that reason. He had blackmail material now. If I messed up, now he had something to hang over my head. Ah, uh, it is stealth beard adjacent, isn't it? This is awful. I got off the call and let out a loud scream, kicking myself for what I had just done. But as it happened, shortly afterwards, while stewing in my self-hatred, I got my first message from someone new on one of the furry sites that Serpent Beard had gotten me to join. Who the hell is this Fluffy? Fluffy, as I called him, had sent me a Skype name. I'd only recently got on Skype at that time as well, so I figured maybe talking to someone new would help me get my mind off what the hell had just transpired. He became not only a friend, but my closest brother in a moment of extreme darkness. And that was when my online persona actually started to take shape with his help. A sparky, hyperactive Fennec with a permanent smile. So in some small way, Serpent Beard, as shitty as he is, did lead to my eventual coming out of my shell. Not like that, though. <laughs> and I have to give him props for that, at the very least. And yet, we haven't even reached the mountaintop of the Serpent Beard assholery yet. I still have two more tales to tell about this patch of ass acne. Stay tuned for the second chapter of the trilogy, the saga of Serpent Beard Part 2, The Perils of PyCon. Jesus, you actually went to the convention? <laughs> After everybody but him canceled? Oh no, this is bad. But we will indeed get into it at some point. Until then, everyone, remember to take care of yourselves. And if you have tales like this, get them off your chest, because it will help you to feel better. For now, though, see you, Space Cowboy. Oh, Space Cowboy, that's a cool sign-off, man. Some people do call me the Space Cowboy. Some people call me the gangster of love. Some people call me Red X. Wee, wee. <laughs> oh, I hate myself for that. But it is a cool sign off. Ah, oh, Serpent Beard, Serpent Beard. What a snake. He has definitely earned his moniker. What happened to you is just some absolute horrible filth. I hate the manipulation most of all, you know? If this was all consensual, I'd be like, weird, but okay. But the fact that you were coerced into it just ugh, makes it so much worse, man. And I wish I could be more mad at you for not being like, okay, bye, whatever, I'm not going to be manipulated like this. But you needed friends, so you stuck around because you thought this guy was actually your friend. Which is something that comes with being part of a certain spectrum. So I do get it, you know? And it's just sad as hell. I did have some of those laughs along the way, some of those cringe laughs, but I also felt that impotent rage just rising up. You know, even if it did only happen through a webcam, it is still a fucking horrible experience to go through. But yeah, apparently it somehow gets even worse than this. And when I have the fortitude too, we will jump into that part number two of Serpent Beard. I promise that I will try to get these parts out in quick succession. If it doesn't happen all three parts before the end of the month, I will eat my hat. <laughs> and you can hold me to that. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy it, friends. Check out them links in the description. There's lots of plugs and stuff, but there's also my social medias, you know, Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Oh, and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons, of course. And as always, I would like to thank them all, but especially Calvacus, Fatboy Shrimp, Robert Waits, TSM Kirby, Teddy the Police, Aaron W, Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Fire Drake, Livison, Silent Revolver, Zathra, Zero MMX, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Rouse Dower, Caustic Fox, Derpy Tricks, Aaron Lennox, Fisher Diggy, 
OG James Cook, JM Coon, Jerry, John Hero, Miss Monday, Nomag, Melgar the Destroyer, Mirthful Baker, my boy Nat One Nick, Lady Nix, Katekins and Elizabeth, Sidestep, Cider Drinker, Serrated Ash, Siegfried, Steampunk Ellie, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tato Fair, That Duck and Bug, Fusky, Treeberg, Redwin, Goose Honk, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, John Indoors, A Roxers, Cake Jerry, that's a different Jerry. <laughs> Crafty Kitty Cat, Orgamic Cam, Princess Rose Lee, The Last Shinobi, and the Maestro himself, Zuka Cervantes. Thank you guys all so much for helping to support the channel. If this video does get demonetized from too much talk of eating the jism, <laughs> I got my patrons to lean back on, which is pretty sweet. I hope that you guys will consider joining them, but I also just want to thank you for hanging out with me today. And I hope that you'll come back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe watch some old Red X videos. There go the goddamn dogs again. <laughs> We're going to have another video up in about eight hours, so I hope you guys look forward to that. Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye.